Hello everyone and welcome back to Pickleball King. So today I'm going to be doing a little bit of a tutorial on Foundation version 1.8.1. .1. So let's get into it. We're just going to go ahead and start a new game and we're just going to go with Valley because it's a pretty good map and it'll let us try out all aspects of the game. So let's go ahead and start. Uh, we're not going to be playing with any mods and let's start the game. Alright, once we're loaded in, it'll add, the game will give you a bit of a tutorial, but we don't need that. We've got this video. So, the first thing that you've got to do in the game is pick a plot of land that you want to start your town in. Now, not every plot of land is going to be available. For a plot of land to be available, it needs to have three conditions. It has to have trees, berries, and stone. So like this plot, great example. We've got stone, berries, and trees. So we're going to go ahead and select this to be as our first plot. So you just click on it, and then boom we have our first village. And these are like the borders of our town, so we can only build within the borders. But we'll be able to expand later on in the game. So the first thing you have to do is build a village center. The village center is going to be basically the middle of your city. Whenever you have villagers coming in, they have to come to the village center before they can actually become uh, citizens or peasants or newcomers of your village. So you can, this is the heart of your village, basically. So let's go ahead and slap it down. And it'll spawn our villagers. And we can just go ahead and press build. All right, now we have villagers. So the first thing we want to do is obviously we need to start building things. So as of right now, we can only we can only build one thing, and that's the builder's workshop. So when you're placing something in the game, if you hold down left control and drag your mouse, you can rotate it. So we're just going to place it like that. That looks pretty good. And let's go ahead and place it and press build. And this will automatically build. So if we click on the builder's workshop, we can see zero out of three builders assigned. If we want to assign some builders over to the workshop, we just click this plus sign. So now we've assigned three builders over here. Now, one of the important concepts of this game is zoning. So if you look down here at the bottom, there's this paintbrush tool. If we go ahead and click this, this allows us to paint extraction, reforestation, and forbidden land as of right now. And we'll get more zones as we go on throughout the game. So let's just start off with the extraction zone. So when you're painting, if you press P or L, it'll actually increase or decrease the size of your brush. And you use the extraction to extract the resources. So if we want the berries, we need to put that on the extraction, the stone, and wherever we want to harvest the wood. So let's just harvest all of the trees for now. And so what we need to build next is a lumber camp. The lumber camp, which is right here, is pretty simple. It will cut down trees for us. Now, you might be seeing that there's this red circle around the lumber camp. This red circle means that it's undesirable to live next to it. So this lowers the desirability of people to live next to it. So you don't want to put this in the middle of like a neighborhood, for example. You want to keep your industry away from where your people are living, generally speaking. So we'll just place it out here a little bit away from the town. We'll have the water shore, the shoreline be nice and pretty. So now we need to wait for the lumber camp to be built. But while we wait for that, we can go over the elements of the UI at the bottom is t uh, pausing and the speed of the game. And if we go up to the top, starting from the left going right, we'll I'll explain the resources. So first we have coins. Obviously you need money to keep the economy going. And then if we go down here on this little flag at the bottom, this is the territory map mode. And it costs 500 coins to buy a new territory. And it costs a certain amount of taxes every week. I believe that the taxes cost more the more territories you have within the game. Up next, is your average daily balance. So this is how much money you're making. That's just to see if you're like making money or not. Now our lumber camp has been built, so let's go ahead and assign a couple uh, lumberjacks over to it. Now obviously you don't have to assign all three woodcutters or all three builders to a building. You should do it as need be, but just for the sake of the tutorial I'm just applying everyone so that we get the most amount of workers going. So after we have the lumber camp we're gonna build the next most important building. We are going to build the berry hut or the gathering hut. So again I'm gonna rotate it by holding left control and I'm gonna place it right next to these berries. So let's have that get building. So as you can see right now we're losing about two gold every um, is that day? Yep every day and that's because buildings take maintenance. But don't worry we'll start generating gold pretty quickly once we get these berries going. In addition to these berries we're actually just gonna queue up a stone cutter camp. And again the stone cutter much like the lumberjack will uh, just harvest the stone. So we'll just put it like over here for now, keep our industry away. So the lumberjack will actually chop down the trees and the trees will go away and we'll actually have to build a forester's hub hut in order to get more trees. But the stone cutter camp, they'll just send miners over to the stone camp and mine the stone and this stone is infinite. It'll last the whole game. So we don't have to worry about it as much. Now, if we go back up 
to the UI up top, we see our resources. We have berries. So berries is a food resource that our villagers can eat. As we progress, we'll get more food types like berries, fish, bread, cheese. Then we have cloth. Cloth is a very helpful resource, and that's sort of a mid-game resource. It's it's a good for decorational, but you do need it for certain buildings, and that's like the sheep economy. Up next is wood. Wood is the basic resource of the game, basically. You use wood to build most things, and you can turn wood into planks. And in addition, houses are built out of wood. And up next, the last resource we have available right now is tools. And tools are a very expensive resource needed for advanced buildings. And we start off with a couple of them, which is good. As you can see, we finished building our gathering hut, so we're going to assign a couple of foragers over to it. So if you do want to bring up the game menu, you're going to want to click this cog at the top right to open up the game menu. If you want to save or to see, take a look at the achievements. Continuing on the UI at the top, this is the villagers. So this shows our population, 8. This shows our happiness. Right now people are still rather unhappy. And this shows how many villagers are unemployed. You want to have little to no unemployment to keep your village growing. Alright, now we're producing berries and this is still being constructed. Now, one of the things we're going to build, if we looked at our happiness, is we need food and we need water. Now water is really easy. You just need to place wells. And as you can see, this has a green circle, which means this is a desirable place to live next to. So we'll want to, so houses will want to live next to here. Now, one of the more useful menus down here is book, or you can press tab to open it. So the first tab, it shows you all your villagers, and if someone's unemployed, so let me go ahead and uh, fire, like, let's say one of the lumberjacks, right? Um, we can see, we can like sort by job, and we can see that these people are unemployed. And then the next tab is building. So we can see what buildings need jobs. Now right now, this isn't too helpful, but once you get a big village of like maybe 200, 300 villagers, and you have a bunch of workplaces, this is super helpful, because you can sort by what doesn't have workers. The next tab is trade, and as we progress, we'll be able to buy in order to buy and sell resources. And th the next tab here is resources, so we can see the amount of resources that we have. And this is how we manage selling. So if we want to buy, we would put a value here, like 100, let's say, and we would say we want to buy until it reaches this or sell. But we're going to just do nothing for it right now. The next tab is the budget. This just shows our money overview of monthly and weekly. Up next is the estates. So as the game progresses, there are three main estates. There's the labor estate, which is basically like um, the workers, and through it you unlock the warehouse, the bailiff office, the fisher huts, and the tavern. There's two uh, currencies for each estate. There's splendor and there's influence. And they both work the same for every estate. So splendor is just how like decorated your village is. So there are specific buildings. So with labor, for example, one of the thing, buildings that affects labor is um, the market. I'm pretty sure it's the market. I may be wrong. But definitely like the tavern will impact it. And you'll see when you're building it. And so the tavern, the more decorations you put on it, the more splendor it'll generate. And as you can see, we need a certain amount of splendor. And then to buy these things, you need to get influence. And to get influence, you need to complete quests for that estate. And that applies for kingdom and clergy. So kingdoms like building your keep, clergy is like building churches and stuff. So we need to stock our resources. So the way we do this is we are going to build a granary in order to store our berries. So let's go ahead and get that queued up. And we also have a stone, a miner. So let's just assign two miners so that they can start mining out this stone. The last tab is the army. Once you get a keep, you'll be able to assign soldiers to it. And you can send soldiers on missions. Missions are really powerful because they unlock unique buildings for you, really good resources, better weapons, and lots of luxury goods. And it's a really good um, way of just like uh, boosting your economy. And the last tab is just the logs. This isn't too terribly important. And of course, how could I forget, we need to name your village and your lord. So my village, let's call it um, tu uh, tutorial, welcome to tutorial land. And Lord Pickleball, of course. Or can we actually change the title? Oh yeah, Lord or Lady, yes. Lord Pickleball. Lord Pickleball. We're not quite a king yet in this game. And obviously, things are going pretty slow, so we can just go ahead and speed up time for now. Alright, some time has now passed, and the granary is now complete. So I'm going to unassign one of the miners, so they work at the granary. So I'll assign them. And here, the granary can store food, so we're going to have it store berries. And we've completed a quest, so we were given 100 energy. So, the next thing that we need to do is we need to build a market. Because markets are where peop our citizens or our villagers are going to be able to buy goods. 
So markets work as a customizable building. So you first just place like the center of the market, so to say. So let's just have it here. And this will not actually appear. This is just so that you can see. And we're going to build a food stall. And as the game progresses, we'll get good stall and luxury good stall. So we're going to go ahead and place the food stall. And as you can see, if we, for example, were to place like a green tent, this would require cloth, which we don't have a lot of, so we're not going to. But it would actually increase the splendor of the green, which is the, um, uh, the first uh, estate that I talked about. So we're not going to do anything like that for now. We'll just place this like this and order it to build. And once we uh, keep expanding, we can actually go back and build onto this building. And this same mechanic is the exact same way you'll build churches, taverns, keeps, and it's a really cool mechanic, and it lets you do a lot of customizing. All right, our market has been completed, so if we click on it, we're going to need to assign a market tender. We don't have any available, so I'm just going to remove one of the miners for now and add them as a market tender, and we're gonna, we need to assign a resource, so we're going to assign berries to here. So now... We've also finished our well. So now the game wants us to encourage immigration. The way immigration works is if your people are happy, so as you can see, we need to raise happiness to 100, and then people will be willing to come to immigrate to our village. And another uh, menu, not menu, but another aspect of the UI will appear, and it'll show how likely people are to immigrate. So right now, we need to increase happiness. So as you can see, people are lacking food. But we have berries now here, and villagers will come and buy berries. Berries are being bought, and happiness is going through the roof. And that's one of the important aspects to keep in mind later in the game, especially when you have, like, citizens. You might not want to upgrade too many citizen, too many of your villagers to citizens just because they're going to require a lot of luxury goods. And if you're unable to provide that, it'll make them very unhappy. All right, and once a month is over, you get a monthly report, and it shows you where your money came from. This is a little bit useful, and as you can see, we've completed Encourage Immigration. So... We are now going to see if we can get any more immigrants, because obviously growing your town is really important, and immigrants is the only way to grow your town. In addition, at this point, we still have a lot of trees, but just so that we don't run out of trees in the future, we're actually going to build a forester camp, because a forester camp will go ahead and plant trees, and we need to plant, or we need to paint a new zone. So we're going to go ahead and paint a reforestation zone. But look at that, it says missing resources for construction. But what are we missing? We need planks. Now, planks are made from wood. And in order to make planks, we just need to go ahead and place down, where is it? Right here, the sawmill. So the sawmill, again, is rather undesirable, so we'll place it over here. And as you can see, we have some immigrants coming over. And now we've gotten a message from the kingdom. So we've got a new quest, and we're getting some money. So we've got to promote newcomers to unlock the warehouse. So, if we go over into the book, and we go into the Estates menu, we can see that we have some in labor influence. So we can go ahead and spend one of that on the warehouse, and we might as well just spend it on the bailiff office. So, let's go ahead and build the warehouse. So the granary stores food, while the warehouse will store resources. So like wood, plank, stone, things like that. So we'll place this over here. And again, this isn't perfect city design. Obviously, you could be doing things much prettier, but I'm just trying to get uh, the general point across. Anyway, as you can see, we've got two quests down here. And you can, if you hover over them, you can see them. So one of the other things that we need to do is build a Lord Manor. Now, the Lord Manor will allow us to upgrade um, newcomers into serfs which is really important. The Lord Manor is much like the market. And if we just go to admin, we can find it really easily. As like the market, it's a multi-block. So we'll build it right here on this little lake so that we have a nice view. So we are going to need to build a core. Sure, we'll go ahead and build that. And let's go ahead and build a door. And as you can see, this shows the splendor. So right now, we're only getting one splendor from it. But if we were to, let's say, add wall banners, each of these banners would add two splendor. And if you right-click, you can delete a part. We're not going to add banners right now, just because this requires cloth, and we only have 10 cloth right now, and we don't have a way of producing it yet. But for now, this should be enough. So we're going to go ahead and build it. Now, in addition, if we look over at our happiness, we see that it's dropped a little bit, and we see that comfort and service are both at minus 20%. Comfort? is residential. So the way houses work in this game is you don't actually build houses, but you zone houses and your villagers will build them yourself. So let's go ahead and let's have houses be allowed to be built here, for example, near our Lord Manor, near the well, where it's green, where the, it's very desirable. While we don't really want to build houses where desirability is low. 
You can zone it, but villagers are unlikely to build houses there. In addition, we need a service. And the way we get service is we need to build a church. So we'll just build a small rustic church. So let's just put that, let's say, in these woods. And as you can see right here, this is a house already starting to get built. So we just need a core for now. So let's go ahead and get that. We need a door. And we're going to need a bell tower. So let's just get a bell tower. We'll just go for a small tower. And obviously you can modify this later. And the bigger the church, the more people it'll be able to give service to. So let's go ahead and build it. All right, some time has now passed and the warehouse has been built. And as we can see, some houses have started popping up. So our mission is we need to unlock a trade route in order to get tools. And as you can see, we've run out of tools and we're trying to go ahead and build our church and we're lacking a tool and we have no way of making it. So the way we want to do this is we're going to want to assign resources. So we're going to put like wood, for example, and stone because, because you know, we're going to want to stockpile that. But we're going to also apply tools to here and we're going to need to hire a transporter. So then we're going to go over to the book and we're going to want to go over to trade and we're going to want to look at trade routes. And in order to buy our tools, we need to find someone who wants to sell tools. So Northbury is willing to sell tools and to unlock this trade route, we need 20 planks. So let's go ahead and also start stockpiling planks in the warehouse. And now this will take a little while. And as you can see, they're starting to move resources over into the warehouse. And their warehouses are the main way to store resources in the game. So they're very important to have because otherwise it's buildings will hit their resource cap so let's say 50 wood and they'll just stop working so warehouses are really important because later on in the game when you're building massive churches or monasteries or keeps they can take hundreds of resources so you want to have good stockpiles in addition it's always good to stockpile food as well all right so now we have 23 planks in storage so we can go ahead and unlock this trader out so we're going to go ahead and click so we can sell berries polished stone planks and wine over to northbury and we can sell to them honey barrels fish glass tools and common wares but what we're going to want to buy are some tools so we're going to go over to resources we're going to click on tools and let's say we want to have 20 tools at all time and we're going to say buy until inventory reaches the value. And so now when a trader comes by, we should be able to buy some food. And since we completed that quest, we've also gotten a free territory. So let's go ahead into the territory map and see what territory we want and get. Now, this is all up to you. However, you want obviously, you know, uh, territories with like berries and stone are really good to have. But something else to consider is later on in the game, you'll get into mining. And mining is done from mineral deposits, like over here. We haven't figured out what there's going to be here, but there's probably going to be iron and quartz and stone and marble and gold. So you want to be kind of close to some of these. And that's something when you're placing your initial spot, you may want to consider. I think there's some here. There's one over there. I think there's one there, yeah, up in the mountains and one over here. So we're, since our village is over here, we are actually going to start working towards this one. So we're going to go ahead and actually buy this territory. So now we can also build in this territory. All right, we have finished building our Lord Manor. So we're going to want to click on it. And in manners, one of the things that you can do is if you go to the parts list, the buildings, you can actually assign roles to the, each room that you build. So the Grand Hall is very important because you're only allowed one of them and it allows you to um, have envoys, which lets you get missions, but it also allows you to promote villagers at the end of every month. You can also build a treasury, which increases your, you know, the amount of coins you can store depending on the size of the room. And you could also build a bailiff office. And a bailiff office is also really important because they do certain missions, like for example, doing geological surveys so that you can figure out what the resources are available. But we're gonna assign, as you just saw, the great hall so that we can promote builders. And once the end of the month comes, so you know, at the end of week four, Four, we should be able to promote some villagers all right and since we actually have a grand hall we actually have a monk request your audience so if we go ahead and click at it there is a monk waiting for us and he will ask for a mission and so now we can choose who we assist and depending on which estate we assist we will get currency for that estate so you can always pick an option or you can say I'm keeping it all at the moment, he's asking for 50 wood. And for us right now, 50 wood is quite a bit. So we're going to say, I'm keeping it all. But this is actually how you would get currencies for all of the estates. You'll have monks come by or envoys, and they'll ask for missions, like let's say berries or bread. And they'll just ask for various items, and that's how you get currency with the, with the you know, related estate. 
And look at that, we have finished building our rustic church and we've just gotten 10 points from the clergy. So if we go into the book, we can see that we could get additional parts in theory. Unfortunately, we don't have quite enough splendor. All right, now that the month has ended and we've gotten our monthly report, if you look at the bottom left, we have the opportunity to promote villagers. So if we pay 20 gold, we can promote all of these newcomers into serfs. And part of the reason that you want to promote villagers into higher ranks is because, for example, as newcomers, they don't need too much. All they need is, you know, food and water, which is pretty good. And once we turn them into serfs, they require housing and churches. But, for example, for some of these, we can upgrade them to commoners. And commoners will require more food and they'll also require goods. And the more higher level villagers you have, the more things you'll be able to sell on the market and the more money you'll be able to make. So for now, we are not going to upgrade or promote anyone to commerce because that's going to be too demanding on the economy and we have no way of producing goods yet. But we're going to go ahead and produce as many of them as we can over to serfs. And there we go. That has been the basics of foundation tutorial. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Let me know if you have any questions or if you want to see more of foundation. I know it was a little bit lengthy. I definitely thought it was going to be a shorter video, but hopefully you guys found it useful. So thank you for watching Pickleball King and have a wonderful day.